It's uh, my pleasure and honor to uh, speak here and, at this remarkable occasion. And I would like to uh, first to thank uh, organizers, uh, Sasha and uh, Samson and Nikita and the Institute uh, for this uh, opportunity. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I had a, a privilege of uh, uh, working closely with Vadim and uh, actually collaborating with him. And uh, this occasion brings uh, memories, a lot of memories, uh, fond memories and sad memories, obviously. And um, particular memories are, uh, are related to the, to the way uh, Vadim was uh, uh, sharing uh, his remarkable mm, ways of, of uh, his remarkable new ways of looking at things, uh, and not only in physics, and also uh, his particular joy of doing physics. Well, we all enjoy uh, doing physics, but uh, uh, I think everyone who knew him uh, would uh, would uh, recognize that he had some a particular flavor of joy of approaching physics that, uh, that I will uh, I will not forget. Mm. And uh, well, uh, the, the uh, Vadim's life, uh, life in physics was uh, short in the clock time, but it is obviously very long in terms of impact and. Uh, he uh, uh, he was at the origin of, of many things, including, in particular, the um, the conformal field theory, and uh, uh, that's uh, that will be. Uh, so this is now the mm, the uh, important part of uh, of mathematical physics and uh, and uh, pure mathematics. And it's still developing, and uh, so the, the, my, my talk will be devoted uh, to this subject. Um, so it's, uh, it, it, some part of this talk would be some development of the subject that concerns conformal blocks. Most of the talk will be in the way of extended introduction, uh, whatever the original uh, part uh, is based on the on the joint work with uh, Lit uh, Alexei Litvinov, Sergei Lukyanov, and Nikita. Uh, and of course, all mistakes and misconceptions are entirely mine. Uh, and uh, so this is uh, uh, the title of the work, Classical Conformal Blocks and Penleve uh, 6. And uh, so before starting, I probably, although conformal blocks, I think it's uh, now a sort of well-established notion in, uh, uh, in, in well, mathematical physics or mathematics, I, I still, I think I will need to, I, I will say a few words in the way of, of, of introduction. So classical conformal blocks appear at a certain limit of, uh, Virasoro conformal blocks when you sa send the Virasoro central charge to infinity together with the conformal dimensions. And the Virasoro, generally, the Virasoro conformal blocks are, uh, are associated with uh, 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 Riemann surfaces with uh, punctures and the modular space of those uh, object Riemann surface with punctures. But I will limit attention. And that will make uh, the, the exposition much simpler. I will limit attention to, uh, and actually, OK, I will limit attention to the sphere with n punctures. Here is the sphere. And uh, the i will always mean, uh, denote the, uh, the positions of these punctures uh, in terms of some complex coordinate on this uh, Riemann sphere. Uh, and actually, I, uh, you will see that I will be mostly talking about sphere with four, four punctures, but 
uh, but uh, for some time we will consider. So uh, consider n punctures. Mm. So what is the conformal block? Roughly speaking, that's uh, some sort of correlation function of uh, chiral primary vertex operators. The primary means the standard uh, primary type of uh, commutation relations with Virasoro generators or operator product expansions with energy momentum tensor. But uh, because uh, they are, uh, these are uh, chiral fields, galomorphic fields, they are not local fields. And so uh, the notion of correlation function is ambiguous. And to, to, to give a meaning to the correlation function, one needs to specify uh, uh, what is uh, what is uh, known as a dual diagram, or or uh, equivalently append decomposition of this sphere of Z punctures uh, here, and uh, I will basically consider I will consider only this kind of uh, uh, hairbrush type of the dual diagrams, uh, and uh, in this case. Uh, we can think of it as a correlation function of the uh, or, or expectation value of this uh, vacuum vacuum expectation value of the product of this vertex operator with the instruction to put in between the operators uh, the, the intermediate state decompositions uh, in terms of the uh, irreducible representations of the Verasora algebra with the dimensions with certain fixed uh, conformal dimension delta of p. Uh, so this is the this uh, diagram is representing uh, is a way a shortcut rep of representing this uh, or the or equivalently this is the uh, the instruction to use the operator product expansions in certain order. Uh, well, in, in the order which is, which is dictated by the dual diagram. Now, delta of p is, uh, uh, delta of p is a specific parametrization of the conformal dimensions in terms of, in terms of these parameters p alpha. At this moment, this is not very important. This uh, parametrization is motivated originally by the fagin fuchs and uh, representations of of Verasora algebra, and uh, and uh, and was very convenient in Liouville theory. Although I will not, I will not actually refer in any systematic way to a Liouville theory. Although I will mention it. All right. So coming back to to this uh, picture, we see that there are n minus three intermediate legs here. So there are I n minus 3 of these parameters. So the conformal block F uh, depends on n minus 3 parameters P. And it also depends on this uh, positions D alpha. And uh, because of uh, SL2 uh, transformations, uh, the dependence is essentially uh, up to projective transformations. So Essentially, there are, um, we can just use the SL2 transformation to send three of these points to pre-designed position, usually 0, 1, or infinity, uh, 0, 1, and infinity. And le uh, after that, we are left with n minus 3 coordinates in this, independent coordinates in this, on this modular space. and. Uh, so it depends on n minus 3 uh, coordinates in the moduli space. And also, of course, it depends on these external dimensions associated with the external legs in the dual diagram. Again, the, but, uh, but uh, I, will, I will omit them in this notation because they will be regarded as fixed numbers. Although, of course, uh, conformal block depends on them. So this is conformal block. I will be, just like I said, I will be dealing mostly uh, with the four-point conformal block, which now depends on a single uh, intermediate state parameter p, a single coordinate x uh, in the moduli space, 
And uh, the notation will be f sub p of x. All right. Um, so the, the, uh, the, the, uh, the conformal blocks are fundamental objects in conformal field theory. They were introduced in the 80s uh, in that uh, time when, uh, which we all fondly remember when Vadim was with us and uh, this conformal, the basics of conformal field theory was originating. Uh, so it, it's, it's a basic object uh, in the sense that correlation functions of conformal field theory are built, uh, are, mm, are built in terms of uh, conformal blocks through the colomorphic factorization. So I, I will produce just an example how it's, it, it, it looks in the Liouville conformal field theory where, let's say, four-point correlation function, that's the simplest example where it, it enters non-trivially, uh, is expressed in terms of the absolute, uh, uh, the absolute value squared of the, of the, of the conformal block. So you have two copies uh, of, of conformal block, depending on x and x bar. And uh, it's integrated over this parameter p with some coefficients which are known as the structure constant of, uh, of Liouville theory. These are explicitly known. And the, one of the reasons I write down this formula is to introduce this parameter b, which is a certain parameterization of the central chart, which I will be using uh, uh, every now and then in the in the course of this discussion. Um, uh, Nikita, when I need to, s to, to stop? <laughs> no, it's not that I want to stop now. I just need to. 1250, 12. 12. 12. OK. That good, sounds good. All right. Uh, so, uh, so this is, uh, uh, this is how. Uh, hmm? 50 minutes. 50 minutes. OK. Um, so this is, a, this is the way how originally conformal blocks appeared in conformal field theory. But, uh, but uh, I mean, uh, it, it turned out that they are uh, the, uh, their emergences seem to be m much more general in, 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 uh, in mathematical physics. And, uh, 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 lately, they, they, they attract attention in relation, uh, well, it's quite unexpected to me. I mean, people who are much smarter than myself uh, probably expected that. But uh, to me, it, 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 uh, it came as a miracle that the same functions appeared in relation to the four-dimensional supersymmetric conformal field theories. And uh, well, in particular, these uh, conformal blocks uh, appeared as a, well, they, they precisely coincide with the uh, instant on parts of the Nikrasov's uh, uh, partition function of the, uh, the four-dimensional n equals to two supersymmetric uh, gauge theory with certain, uh, well, if we are talking Virasora confor uh, conformal blocks, that's uh, 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 well, a uh, uh, supersymmetric gauge theory with certain content of, of uh, product of SU2 uh, uh, gauge group. And, uh, and um, the, uh, remarkably, the, uh, the, the parameters uh, which are which uh, originate from the moduli space on this uh, Riemann surface plays the role in of the gauge coupling constant relates to the uh, to the gauge coupling constants in this uh, in this uh, gauge theories and the uh, parameters p relate to the to the vacuum moduli in this gauge theory. So it all uh, to me it looks uh, sort of. Uh, Sort of, yeah, sort of uh, uh, remarkable, I would say. Uh, 
uh, but uh, nonetheless, it's uh, uh, it's uh, it's uh, so, and uh, and I will. It's now it's uh, rigorously proven, and I will mention that. Uh, but uh, but uh, uh, so uh, perhaps this this functions uh, play some sort of uh, wide role in in all these correspondences. Uh, but uh, uh, the, uh, the point is that these functions uh, have some, uh, we have some control on these functions. In particular, the, the conformal, invari uh, conformal symmetry, uh, uh, generally speaking, the conformal symmetry can completely fixes these functions. Similarly, on the, in the, in the supersymmetric gauge theories, of course, well, I mean, conformal symmetry fixes uh, power series expansion, and and by implication, of course, fixes this function. So if I write down power series expansion of this function in terms of the moduli, all the coefficients are fixed by conformal symmetry here. Uh, and similarly, this is an instant on expansion in the in the uh, n equals to two supersymmetric gauge theory, and this. Mm, these uh, coefficients are given by Nikrasov's uh, integrals of the moduli of the instantons. Of course, they are fixed. But that is a, f a power series, and uh, we would like to have a better analytic, uh, global analytic control of, over these functions, and uh, because they play this important role. And that's uh, one of the motivations of this, this uh, uh, this work, which I'm going to report, is, is gaining some better analytic control. There are some things which are known uh, uh, or, or, or assumed about this. Uh, I'm, I will be speaking about uh, uh, a four-point conformal block, but the generalization to, to the n-point conformal blocks are more or less straightforward. Uh, so the, the, the conformal block is, 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 uh, is analytic uh, uh, on the universal cover of the, of the, of the module. Uh, well, basically, yeah, on the, on, uh, on the universal cover of the wonderless space. And uh, it, as a function of this p parameter, it's meromorphic function. Uh, and it obeys the the, the the crossing relay, what I call crossing relation, that's this relation when you interchange the interchange the uh, the position of the uh, the punctures by braiding transformations, and uh, then the conformal blocks are related through this uh, integral transformation. You transform uh, a sort of uh, conformal block through the conformal block in the cross channel uh, uh, with the integral um, with so certain kernel which is uh, which is related with the kernel here is essentially a 6 j symbol uh, a 6 j symbol of continuous representations of uh, q deformed in uh, universal enveloping algebra of SL2. So this is a part of the, I think, most essential part of the knowledge about the analyticity of these functions. Uh, now, classical limit. I, I'm going to talk, speak about classical conformal block that emerges when you send the central charge to infinity. And the interesting limit here appears when uh, when you also send, uh, I will before before proceeding, I will again write the central charge in this Liouville inspired or Fagin Fuchs inspired, uh, actually because that appeared uh, uh, before uh, 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 parameterization of uh, the central charge in terms of this param coupling parameter B. This is not essential, but. Uh, but uh, but I will use it because I like it. That's the only, that's the, only uh, the, the the most important reason. So uh, so uh, I parameterize the central charge in terms of this B, 
And the classical limit will be the limit of B going to 0. B is like a, a, a Planck's constant. Actually, B squared will be analog of the Planck's constant. So interesting limit emerges when you send central charge to infinity, in which case, of course, we, we know that a sort of algebra converts, reduces to Poisson bracket algebra. But also, you need to send the dimensions to infinity uh, so that the ratios of the dimensions and central charge remain fixed, are kept fixed. And I will refer to these deltas, the, the ratios, uh, as the classical dimensions. Cla this, uh, not capital, de uh, but lowercase deltas as classical dimensions. And again, I, I will use the parametrization uh, of this, uh, of this uh, classical dimension delta in terms of uh, these parameters lambda and nu, depending of, uh, of uh, either I'm speaking about the deltas associated with the external legs of the dual diagram or internal, internal lines. Uh, and uh, well, I mean, the, the dimensions could be any. So generally, well, I could think if, if they are real, I could think of lambda as a real or pure imaginary. But generally, I will think of these lambdas as com com uh, generic complex numbers. Now, when I perform this limit, the conformal blocks exponentiate in this form. That's uh, something which uh, semi-classical intuition makes us to expect. But mathematical status is, uh, to me at least, is not, is not completely it, uh, ultimately clear. Uh, so it exponentiates uh, so that it, it, it is exponential so of 1 over b squared uh, uh, times f, um, uh, which is this f. Uh, lowercase f is, is called classical conformal block. Now, the, uh, there is no uh, doubt that this is indeed correct statement. And actually, the, uh, the, I think the prof proof is sort of exists. It's, uh, it's just uh, my, my brain doesn't, uh, didn't yet incorporate all the details of it. Uh, it will happen eventually. It, it probably consists of mixture of the results which come from different sides of this uh, Aldai Gayota Tashikawa uh, correspondence, which involve, uh, involves the, uh, the the form of Nikrasov uh, for, uh, form of Nikrasov's representation of the coefficients of the of the uh, power-like expansion, which which looks like which look like. Uh, uh, a coefficient of the virial expansion of, the, of certain gas. And uh, then the classical limit is like a thermodynamic limit in, of this gas. And then exponentiation is, is, is usual thing, which is. And then uh, there, there is a, now a, a sort of rigorous proof of this correspondence at the level of this four point function. So, so I think the combination of this statement. If we absorb it so, uh, properly, would lead to. But I don't, I'm not particularly interested in, in, in rigorous proofs. So let me just proceed. Now, there is, a, uh, the, uh, there is a, a neat and well-known relation. I think it's, uh, it's again, uh, a game we, we, we all played uh, 30 years ago. Uh, we uh, relation of this. Uh, of this thing to, to the to the monodromy properties of second order differential equations. So consider the differential equation of this type, which uh, with a, with a para, uh, parameter with a variable z regarded as a coordinate on a Riemann sphere. This is a, a differential equation with n reg regular singularities on the sphere. And, uh, and uh, so uh, uh, to, to, to make it precise from the very beginning, I will regard, uh, so the, 
the, the potential term sort of in this equation involves uh, two kinds of parameters, uh, delta i and ci. The delta i uh, will be regarded as fixed, as fixed numbers. Uh, and uh, actually, I will, I will take them equal to the classical dimensions, which appeared in the previous transparencies, and uh, identify them with the parameters. And, uh, and CI are the celebrated accessory parameters. And they, uh, uh, so, so this uh, basically, this differential equation is parameterized by, by uh, the positions of the I and, uh, and uh, CI. Well, in fact, there are uh, uh, only n minus 3 independent accessory parameters for obvious reason, which, uh, which I, I sort of explained by this line. There are three, uh, if we don't want uh, an additional singularity to hide at infinity, uh, then there are three elementary relations between them. So th basically, there are n minus three of these independent accessory parameters. And also, the position zi, because the, f the form of the differential equation doesn't change under SL2 transformation, again, the zi's are, are uh, defined uh, modular. Uh, SL2 transformations, so, so there are essentially, again, we can send three of them to pre-designed favored positions, and uh, so there are n minus three uh, parameters of this sort. So this, uh, this differential equation is, uh, is parameterized by two times n minus three complex parameters. Of course, this differential equation defines a monodromy group, uh, which is a homomorphism of fundamental group of a sphere with uh, punctures into SL2. SL2 is, uh, is a transformation of the basis of, uh, mm, of uh, two independent solutions of this equation uh, under the analytic continuations along contours representing the elements of the fundamental group. And, uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, uh, because, uh, because uh, the, uh, I, I say the, uh, the, the uh, lowercase delta are fixed, uh, we are dealing with the representation in which in which uh, the conjugacy classes of the matrices M, I, which are representations of the of the this basic ele elementary elements, uh, basic elements associated with the with the path elementary path around individual punctures, are fixed and actually related to these parameters lambda, which is the parameterization of the of the Delta, uh, and also there is, of course, uh, uh, ambiguity in the choice, arbitrariness in the choices of base, overall choice of basis, uh, and so uh, we have this object, which is a space of, of such a homomorphisms with fixed conjugacy classes, we of the elementary, of the elementary matrices and. Uh, defined up to overall conjugation. And that is, roughly speaking, uh, the, the, the modulus, moduli space of the flat connections over the Riemann surface, over the sphere with the, with the end punctures. Well, this is well-known object. Uh, it can be caught in, uh, parameterized by, by various invariants, like traces of this matrices with some relations between them. It's well known that it's, uh, there are exactly two uh, times n minus three independent objects uh, of this sort, uh, independent uh, parameter, uh, independent invariants of this sort. And that basically means that, uh, that uh, 
the differential equation of this so second order differential equation of this sort, once the, the, the parameters delta are fixed, it doesn't have continuous isomodromic deformations, or uh, currently the, the parameters, uh, the positions of the punctures and accessory parameters, I denote this uh, n minus 3 z's and n minus 3 ci's uh, uh, indicated by primes, that are n minus 3 independent of them, uh, they can be regarded as local coordinates in this modular space of flat connections. And, uh, and also, uh, it's well known that there is a natural symplectic form on this modular space due to ITI bot. And these coordinates are Darbu coordinates in this, in this modular space. All right, so how the, 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 uh, how the classical conformal block is related to this is, is again very well known. I'm still in the middle of extended introduction. Uh, uh, and that is related through, through the, the, uh, the special cases of the, of the uh, conform, uh, conformal blocks when you have a, a degenerate representations with null vectors. And there are, uh, I will actually explicitly refer to, to two of them, special representations, in which uh, null vectors appear on the, on the level two. And I will, uh, this I think is a standard notation by now. The, these are delta one, two, and delta two, one. These are the associated conformal dimensions expressed in terms of this parameter b. They are expressed in a very simple way. That's why I, I like this parameterization. And these are actually the, the coordinates of the null vectors in explicit form. And from this, it follows that the, cord, that the conformal block in which you, I'm going to, I, I went back to the quantum case where B is fine. Uh, the, the, the conformal block which involves the, the insertion of the, this degenerate vertex operator with the null vector in this in associated representation uh, are based the sec second order uh, differential equation uh, of this form. Uh, and uh, this is called null vector decoupling equation, right? Uh, and uh, and the, the second one I don't write down for the uh, 2 comma 1. It's the same equation with B replaced by 1 over B. There is this symmetry. So I will, it, it will appear uh, shortly in this discussion. All right, uh, so, so this, is a, this is equation. And now I want to send b to 0, again with this uh, delta divided by b squared, uh, delta uh, also going to infinity with, uh, with uh, lowercase delta kept finite, but uh, the insertion, uh, the dimension of this uh, delta 1, 2 uh, doesn't go to infinity, it remains uh, finite, minus uh, 1 half, uh, tends to minus 1 half. And uh, as usual in, in, in classical uh, limit, we expect by, by usual semi-classical expectation, we expect to have an exponential factor and the pre-exponential factor, which depends on uh, the, the only effect of this, uh, uh, of this additional insertion is going to, uh, to be on the pre-exponential uh, factor. And from that, uh, and from that uh, the, the differential equation in the previous section, of the previous slide, this one, uh, transforms into into the, the differential equation, which, which appeared here, uh, with the accessory parameters uh, 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 
being the derivatives of the classical conformal law. This, of course, is very similar uh, to the expression for the accessory parameters, which appeared in the uniformization problem. Uh, and uh, this was uh, conjectured by Polyakov long ago, again, in this early 80s, and then proven by uh, Tektajan and Zograf. Uh, in the, uh, 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 but the associated uh, monodromy problem is different, as I'm going to explain. Uh, 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 as I'm going to explain and now, in the uniformization problem, we are dealing with the with the uh, with the condition that the monodromic group is going to be Fuchsian. That means the monodromic group associated with this uh, 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 second-order differential equation is going to be. Um, uh, we, we have to impose the condition that it is embedded into a real subgroup of SL2. Uh, that means uh, uh, I wanted to put SL2R, uh, but, uh, but uh, it's still C. It must be SL2R here. Uh, either SL2R or SL2. Mm, that's the. the the fault of uh, doing this thing with mouse. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right, anyways, uh, it's, it's either SL2R or SL2. And in that case, uh, uh, the, the accessory parameters are uh, become gradients in terms of Z of the, uh, of the classical action calculated on, uh, on the solution of classical Liouville equation, which depend uh, uh, on z not in a galamorphic way, but it depends on, on z in non-galamorphic way. So it depends on z and z bar. All right. Uh, and uh, this is to be compared to what uh, we have now. This uh, accessory parameters which we come up with are gradients of the classical conformal block. And, uh, and of course, these things are somehow related. Uh, in particular, the 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 Liouville uh, uh, action, the Liouville action, the uh, which uh, the Liouville action, which is related to the sol to the solution of the monodromy problem associated with the uniformization problem, uh, are, can be expressed and uh, can be solved in terms of the conformal block. Uh, I, I write down schematically the solution. The, the Liouville action is expressed in terms of a combination of conformal blocks plus some capital Xi, which is a known function. But you need to, uh, to, to evaluate it at, at nu, which is uh, in turn depends on z and z bar. So it, uh, it's not simply a sum of the, the functions of z and z bar, because nu are determined by extremization of this function in terms of of new, mm. so in in in, in fact, uh, the the uh, Liouville action is related to to the conformal blocks by by some sort of Legendre transformation. But what I want to say is that is that it looks like the conformal blocks are more basic objects; these are galomorphic mm, objects, and uh, and how to so, uh, how to solve the inverse problem, how to express the uh, conformal blocks in terms of Liouville action, uh, this problem is not solved. And I suspect it is impossible to solve this problem. And so I am not sure I understand why people sometimes call uh, problem of conformal blocks the complex Liouville theory. Uh, so I think it's, it's quite a different problem. So we, we, can, uh, we can ask now the questions. This f appears as a classic in the form of classical in the exponential. So it looks like it is a classical action of some system of classical mechanics. So natural question is uh, what classical mechanical system is behind all that? And, uh, and uh, this is a. 
this is a question which I, I think I will produce, maybe not entirely, ultimately satisfactory answer, but, but some answer to. Uh, and also, uh, but th th let me first start with a much simpler question, which is easy to answer. And this is what kind of monodromy problem this uh, equation that uh, accessory parameters are gradients of the, uh, of the conformal block, which kind of monodromy problem is solved by this equation. That, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty obvious. Because uh, we remember that the conformal, classical conformal block, well, conformal block itself, and uh, classical conformal block is uh, defined relative to the pan decomposition of this dual diagram. And uh, just like I said, one of the ways to interpret dual diagram, to read the dual diagram, is the, the way, the succession in which operator product expansion are used. And because uh, we are dealing with the insertion of uh, the vertex, the generate vertex operator v, v12, we need uh, the operator product expansion of v12. And those, these, uh, this uh, expansion obey the well-known fusion rules from which one immediately read out the answer. And it basically says that if we fix the uh, the accessory parameter according to this gradient formula, uh, the accessory parameter are gradients of the uh, derivatives of the classical conformal block. Uh, that fixes the monodromies around the succession of contours, which are exactly associated with the pan decomposition corresponding to this dual diagram. Uh, that means if I take these contours, and, and shrink them, it would correspond to the degeneration of a sphere in which it splits into a succession of, of three punctured spheres in which these three punctured spheres are exactly the vertices of this, of this dual diagram. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, now let me uh, sort of uh, put this uh, in the, in the, uh, this thing in the neat form uh, and uh, in general form, which is d uh, due to to the the work uh, of Nikrasov, Rosli, and Shatashvili of a couple of years ago, and uh, and uh, uh, well, first of all, one immediately observes that because because these contours can be this uh, this uh, path here can be chosen to be non-intersecting uh, associated mm, parameters new, which also can be part of coordinates in, the, in this modular space, they are Poisson commuting in the, in the uh, idea about um, in the, in the, uh, with respect to the idea about symplectic form. And uh, so one can uh, uh, one can define another set of Darbu coordinates, uh, which I denote now nu, this uh, monodromy parameters associated with this, uh, with this contour, and, uh, and, and uh, conjugated parameters mu, which uh, 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 conjugated parameters mu, and then uh, the, uh, the, the classical conformal block becomes I important part of the associated uh, uh, generating function of associated conformal uh, canonical transformation. So the, the new Darbu coordinates are related to the C and Z, which has also Darbu coordinates, which, which I already mentioned. Uh, uh, so we have a generating function. Actually, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's convenient to add uh, uh, a certain term. This, there is ambiguity, of course, in defining this canonically conjugated uh, variables, and, uh, and one can uh, convenient to add certain term. Uh, well, which is convenient both from geometric construction of the uh, canonically conjugated variables, and also it has nice interpretation in terms of 
supersymmetric uh, gauge theories. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, I, I will a little come back a little bit. Uh, so I, I have uh, there is something interesting things to say about uh, uh, about the uh, canonical transformations between different uh, uh, Darbu coordinates associated with different dual diagrams, and that's uh, closely related again to this work of Nikrasov, Rosli, Shatashvili. But uh, I think uh, the, to, the time is running out, and I will better. Uh, skip this part. Anyway, let's uh, uh, try to move forward and uh, try to explore uh, the second null vector equation, which is related to the uh, to the to the null vector which are obtained from the null, uh, the generated representation which is obtained from that one by replacing uh, uh, b by y over b. Now this. Decoupling equation takes this form. The delta now is uh, becoming uh, large in the classical limit. And therefore, uh, the decoupling equation converts in the classical limit, converts not in, in the, in the uh, second order uh, ordinary differential equation, but it's instead it becomes a, a a uh, hamilton jacobi like equation of this form. This is, of course, very well known. Uh, and so it's, a, it's, a, it's still a partial differential equation. But, but uh, in fact, if you have only four, uh, four points, it's, a, it's simply a hamilton jacobi equation for one-dimensional system. So if you take a, four-point conformal block and take a limit, classical limit here, uh, the equation which you have is a, a Hamilton-Jacobi equation of one-dimensional system with, uh, with a coordinate which I denote y. That's where the insert, we insert the 2-1 uh, uh, degenerate operator. And uh, just like I said, three of the points I sent to, to certain positions. That's my SL2 freedom. And uh, one of the moduli is still, uh, is still uh, one of the um, points is still there. That's uh, the cross ratio, independent cross ratio. So I denote it T because it's going to play the role of time. So uh, then uh, the, the classical limit generates this Hamilton-Jacobi equation with this Hamiltonian. It may look, look ugly, but everyone who is familiar with uh, Penleve equations would recognize that this is a Hamiltonian associated with the Penleve 6 equation. Uh, with Penleve 6, of course, is uh, one uh, most general and, uh, and um, uh, of the of the six equations, which uh, produce transcendental solutions and uh, have this Penleve property that they have no si no movable singularities, that means um, the, there are no the solutions. If you take a solution y of t uh, as a, as a, regarded as a function of complex time. There are no singularities which depend on the initial data, all right. So, uh, so, but the but the simple but simple poles. Uh, but uh, here, because y is uh, by, by by construction, y is better considered as a as a coordinate on a Riemann sphere. Simple poles are also not really singularities. So, we don't have a singularities movable singularities at all. And of course, there are fixed singularities at these uh, points uh, 1, 0, and infinity, uh, which are some power-like singularities, which I'm, I will mention soon. All right, so this is, uh, I think this is also uh, uh, rather, rather, rather straightforward 
thing. Uh, we, I think many people knew that, but uh, but uh, uh, it turns out that this is quite useful in in analysis of the of the conform. This is this is quite useful in uh, actually evaluating the conformal block. Uh, and uh, and uh, I will basically I will not go into many details, but. Uh, but it's based on very straightforward elementary observation that that by by definition of the classical action consider consider some trajectory some solution y of t of the Penlevis six equation uh, such that it passes through at some times t one and t two it passes through two points y and two then but by definition of classical action we have a uh, this relation between the classical limits of this conformal blocks at uh, y and t associated with these two points with the coefficient, which is the classical action, evaluated at this piece of the classical trajectory. So what remains is to, to, to choose properly t1 and t2, to choose properly the solution and the initial point and the final point. So the solution, we take generic solution, right? And this generic solution is known to behave like a power near any of the singular point. And to be definite, I choose uh, 0 as the singularity. It behaves like that with some power nu. Uh, the nu will be identified with the parameter, the monodromy parameter. Uh, associated with this intermediate, uh, intermediate uh, classical dimension, and uh, uh, and so uh, and so and so, uh, if I take this solution, uh, then uh, then we see that that uh, as t goes to zero, y also goes to zero, and in this correlation function, in this in this uh, conformal block. At t goes to zero, this point and this and this point uh, merge with this point. So three of the insertions merge, and we are uh, we have a three-point conformal block, which is a constant. All right. So if we take uh, t1 equals zero, then the starting point here is just is just some constant. OK, so uh, now if we look at the trajectory uh, uh, y of t, uh, then at certain complex, generally complex t, it hits uh, one of other, uh, other points where other insertions sit. Uh, and uh, so uh, if we take t2, the, the other t in this uh, expression over what do I do? Yeah, if I take T2, uh, in such a way that the, that uh, T2 equals to some uh, equals to some x at which uh, y hits one of the other insertions here. Again, for definiteness, I, I I take it that y there hits the point infinity. Then uh, at this point the uh, the, 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 this uh, reduces to four-point conformal block with some shifted dimension associated with the infinity, which can be also this, this shift can be computed using the using the the diffusion rules, uh, standard fusion rules, and so forth. I, I skip the details, but. Uh, but uh, basically, the bottom line is, uh, is uh, uh, with this particular choice, the, the solution, certain solution of the Penlevis six equation, defined de de defined by by these initial conditions, uh, which eventually would hit uh, would hit uh, infinity, one of the other insertion, basically interpolates between the three point conformal block and and four point conformal block and. Uh, Basically, we need to calculate 
uh, the classical action on this solution. There are some subtleties because although the the the, uh, the solution itself is regular uh, because of Penleve properties, regular the action has some simple logarithmic singularities. One need to make regularization and so forth. So that's, uh, I have to put, this is something which I, 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 I may put in the frames. That's uh, on the level of four point function, that's the answer, how the classical conformal block is expressed in terms of the, of the classical action of the uh, evaluated on the, uh, evaluated on, uh, on the classical, on certain classical solution of Penleve's six equation. So in some sense, it answers the question of what classical problem is behind this. Uh, I'm not sure it's uh, completely satisfactory. I will say uh, probably one or word uh, about that. But uh, at least uh, it could be called uh, some sort of lazy answer to this question. Uh, there is a little bit to say about the, the well, long-standing of century-old problem about the monodromy problem of, uh, well, basically the first non-trivial problem after the Riemann equation of, of the differential equation with uh, regular singularity where you have four singularities and, uh, and the monodromy problem then is uh, is related to the uh, through this is related to the connection problem of Penleve six. The connection problem is again if you start with the solution given in terms of that kappa and nu at the singular point, then it eventually arrives at uh, at certain point x where it it uh, uh, at at certain time x it uh, it uh, says hits infinity or any other of this. Uh, of these points, uh, but let's say infinity, and uh, you want to connect the initial data nu and kappa at one end to the to the parameters x and y not. And if you uh, manage to do that, then the accessory parameter, which solves the monodromy problem, as I mentioned, is is is, is explicitly related to that. I don't want to uh, to enter the details here. This is fairly straightforward. Uh, well, of course, the uh, 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 the one can compare that to known things about the power series. Uh, this goes through to known expansions about the Penleve, and uh, this is just uh, uh, just taking. Uh, in grinding some power series expansion, that's simple. Uh, let me make some remarks uh, here. One is that, uh, well, everyone who mm, who looked at the Penleve and uh, whatever all these kind of things uh, would recognize close relation to the monodromy preserving deformations of uh, Fuchsian systems. In this case, SL two. Uh, 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 differential equation, you have a now matrix differential equation where, again, with regular singularities, where now AI are two by two matrices, uh, traceless matrices. And uh, now we have a monodromy preserving deformations, which are described by this Schlossinger uh, system or Schlossinger flow. And uh, the, the Penleve appears in the simplest non-trivial case when the number of, uh, of regular singularities is four. And, uh, and uh, well, it was, uh, uh, as was demonstrated by, by Richard Tichin long ago, this Schlesinger flow is just a classical limit of, uh, of the system which bears Vadim, Vadim's name. And so I, the, perhaps the true understanding of all this thing, and not only the classical limit, but the quantum thing uh, lays through uh, this, uh, this uh, system. 
and also uh, uh, the, the, uh, the another uh, kind of incarnation of uh, uh, another manifestation of, of Pinlevé was discovered uh, not so long ago by this uh, in the remarkable series of papers by this uh, this uh, physicist from uh, Kiev. Uh, who discovered that uh, that uh, this time the not the classical action but uh, famous tau function, which is more or less the same tau function which Sasha mentioned in the in the first part of the uh, in the first talk to, to this morning, uh, appears as the generating function of the conformal blocks, but not the classical conformal blocks, but quantum conformal blocks at uh, the central charge um, equals to 1. And, uh, and uh, oh, just lately, uh, uh, Nikita suggested that uh, it might be closely related again through this Vadim's system. All right, so that's uh, kind of what I wanted to say. Questions? Yes. yes. I was. Uh, I wrote some supporting letter for these guys uh, who found this nice expansion for this. So I know this paper. And uh, surprising, uh, really surprising that uh, there we have sequel one, and to here we have sequel infinity. May it happen that if we expand in 1 over b square, that the next term of expansion will coincide more or less with uh, c equal 1. And probably with other c in other terms of this expansion. Uh, I don't know about uh, another terms of this expansion, but, uh, but, but it might be so, yes. Because it's very, a little bit miraculous. That, uh, it is a little bit miraculous, but uh, but uh, it might be that just just like I mentioned that Nikita suggested that through Vadim's system uh, there could be a sort of direct relation. You consider the limit c goes to infinity. Would you have the same structure if c goes to minus infinity? It is the same. Uh, it doesn't matter. I, the, the, the limit, the limit um, from, what, what, from the point of view I am discussing, the limit is regular. It doesn't depend from which side you approach it. So then the c called minus infinity as an interpretation in, uh, in terms of processes. It's a small noise limit of SLE. And, uh, do you have an understanding of uh, why you like spend very in, in the SLE or I Say it again. C goes to minus infinity on the second order differential equation is a focal point equation in the small noise limit of SLE. Yes, yes. So this means that Pan V is somewhere in the SLE processes. Must be, yes. Yeah. Must be it must be possible to fish it out from there. Yeah, uh, th there is a, there is a gazillions of questions about that <laughs> uh, uh, emerging from 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 uh, from this observation. Uh, uh, in particular, uh, in particular, again, back related to Liouville theory. Uh, then th there is a question: uh, How come the, the what is the meaning of this spin Levé equation? Because it should show up in the in the Liouville theory, and what is the meaning of it there? Well, I mean, it, it definitely is there, and the people notice that. But, but uh, what is the what is the meaning of it? That's an interesting question. I I think no one raised even raised that. Okay, let's thank Sasha again. <laughs>